Hello everyone, Simicraft here, and welcome to Simicraft Plays uh, Danganronpa Trigger, Bur Trigger Happy Havoc Live. Uh, so I've never played Danganronpa before. I've heard good things about it. So hopefully this will be fun. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as I understand it, it's sort of similar to like the Ace Attorney games to an extent. So I'm not sure to how great of an extent necessarily. And yeah, I mean, this is what won the poll today for what we would be streaming. So today, this is what we are streaming. Simple as that. Uh, yeah. In terms of streams, uh, just so everyone's aware, the Tuesday stream for next week is not going to happen. I'm going to be uh, out of town on Tuesday, so I will not be able to stream that day. We might make up for it with a Friday stream, though. Like, this week. Like, tomorrow. We'll see about that. Maybe, maybe not. Um, if we do a fr Friday stream, it'll probably be, uh, Skyward Sword, since that won the- or not won, it came in second place in the poll for today's stream, so that would be a logical thing to do, I'd say. Uh, additionally, we do have, uh, our, our new follower goal is set to 250, as, of course, I'm sure most of you know, we have started with our blind portal playthrough, that's not quite done yet. Probably the Thursday stream next week is when we'll next be doing that, so tune in for that. Uh, and for our new 250 goal, we do not yet have a goal specifically of what we're gonna do when we get to 250. Hello, Mini Does Art. Everyone say say hi to Mini Does Art. Mini Does Art is of course the wonderful artist who did the uh, who's doing the emotes for this channel. So thank you for that. Very big appreciation there. Uh, Anyways, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about, chat? It was regard- ah, yes, the follow goal thing. Uh, so I don't quite know exactly what we're going to do with that goal, like, what what's the reward for the goal getting reached? Uh, I do- like, the idea I have had... is, uh... Possibly doing Ring Fit Adventure, like doing the like Ring Fit Adventure Marathon, trying to beat the whole game in like a single playthrough. Uh, I did look up since I floated that idea what the uh, like time to beat.com time to beat of the game is, and turns out it's like like an average of 36 hours. So um, that's slightly ridiculous. I did say though on like time to beats.com or how long to beat.com that if you're rushing you can possibly do it in 28 so yeah we, we might have have an, an out there uh so i don't know that seems almost impossible but that could make it all the better of a thing to do so i'm torn on whether or not we're going to do that uh, i might come up with a different idea perhaps but it's i don't know it sounds kind of fun anyway Enough of that. Let's get into Trigger. No, it's not Trigger Happy ha Havoc. It is Dengon Rampa. Trigger Happy Havoc. Why have they made it so that the title is below the subtitle in this uh, particular game? I don't know. Uh, but uh, let's get into this. Oh, and for anyone who's unaware, Dengon Rampa is very much, as I understand it, uh, for mature audiences. So uh, viewer discretion is advised. I mean, obviously not the first game of that nature we've played on the channel, but just so everyone's aware. Okay. Would I be better off playing this with a controller, I wonder? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit late to set up a controller now, but whatever. I think I can use my arrow keys and enter. Alright, a uh, new game. Language. We could go Japanese and just not understand anything, but I think English is the way to go here. Logic difficulty, kind, and action difficulty. I think it's better with mouse, but it's a preference. Okay. So I'm kind of confused. What? I, I'm i inclined to probably just keep both of these in the middle since I've never played this game or any other game from the series before. What would logic difficulty mean be? I, I guess... Like, I've never come across that before, because I guess this is somewhat a puzzle game in its nature, like a logical puzzle game in some of like Ace Attorney or something. So that means we'd have to make more sophisticated deductions. I mean, that sounds like it could be a more interesting stream. So maybe we 
turn the logic difficulty up to mean. Really hard to figure out. I know I'm cool with a challenge to figure stuff out. I think. I don't know. It's tough to make this decision before really knowing what the game's like at all, but I have faith in my intellectual capabilities, so we'll go to me. Why not? I mean, I played a puzzle game recently that I did fairly well in, right? I beat uh, Botany Manor in like two hours less than uh, the IGN reviewer, so there's that. Okay, we got the most, the very mean looking plushie. And. Very distinctive art style. I got this? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Is that like an Iron Maiden? No, it's a, it's a rocket ship? What? Excuse me, what is going on? It's even making like a little like R2-D2 noise. It's like a what? But I think that might have just been it's like drilling through the ceiling. Oh, and now it's coming back down. And what a way to go. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So I say, oh, he disappeared. He got out. It was like a Houdini escape or something. Nope, it wasn't. Was not. Dang and Rampa trigger happy havoc. The massive high school towers over all the buildings in this bustling urban area. Yes, yeah, Nappers, he is indeed dead. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable, a government funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. So it's one of those situations for, where the, uh, it's not about the education, it's about the networking opportunities. I see, I see, okay. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. Well, at least that's what they want you to think. It is built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes it Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend the school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school, filled with the ultimate students, was me. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. Okay, before we advance chat, because this, I'm noticing, of course, this game has voice acting. Is the voice acting close enough in terms of volume to my speaking for this to be an enjoyable experience, or do I need to turn that up? Anything, chat? This is rather important. I do need some feedback here. Audio seems fine to you. Okay. Any other opinions? Sounded good. Okay. It's good. All right, all right, we'll, we'll continue then. As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. That's right, I'm your average anime protagonist. Who would have thought? I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like, if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, it'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Mm. Natural politician, I see. 
even among the average, I'm completely average, so I can't even say that I'm your everyday hero type. Hmm, I see, I see. Is his superpower being super average? That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is... Well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. I was preparation quotes. Alright, uh, I'll read the emails first. Can I hide the text? If I cannot, I'll read it first. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are the truly elite in their field. Okay, that doesn't do it. What about this? I'm trying all like the visual novel tricks. Oh, well. Anyways, uh, so it's this. Hope Peak Academy, 15, name anonymous. Come on, keep it coming. Uh, apparently my friend kind of knows them. I guess everything there is state of the art. This year's ultimate pop sensation is going to be going there. Yeah, the ultimate baseball pro is going to be there. So jealous it's only for winners. How something is blocked by the text. Anyone can't. I think you can hide the text box with Q. Thank you. So jealous it's only for winners. How can anyone even get in? Anyone can't. Fair enough. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And all I saw was talk about ultimate students, who are way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the in for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. Hmm, lots of mag magazines here. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader, too? Huh. Wouldn't have expected that one. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs ever love the guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler. Ultimate gambler. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're like really good at poker or something, fair enough. The ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyance, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they be just average students like me, without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean... I know I don't have much in the way of personality. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. 
As a result, you have been selected, and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky students. <laughs> the ultimate lucky students. Okay, and I suppose the ultimate gambler did not have that base covered. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this kind of reminds me. I, I forget who I heard say it, but it was like a bit someone had. Where they said, like, at the Olympics, they should do... I'm not taking credit for this myself. I, this is complete uncredited plagiarism. But they said basically that, like, at the Olympics, they should have in each sport that, uh, well, some gambling is also, well, some gambling is some skill. Uh, you know, car, the card games in particular. Um, but, but anyways, they're, they're saying that at the Olympics, they should make it so that there is... In each event, just like an average Joe off the stands competing to kind of show the difference of like just how amazing the Olympic athletes are compared to just your average person. Which would be interesting. I mean, I'm sure from like a liability perspective, that would probably be difficult to do, but you know, would be funny at least. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting still isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step toward the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a real, el or a really elegant clock in the corner. It says it is 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until eight o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be here, yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before meet the meeting, just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school, maybe that'll help me calm down a little. Bro, why is he so early? I mean, better early than late. That's how I like to live my life. Now, I do know, acknowledge that the stream was like two minutes late, but... I mean, that, that's different, because I was already he Like, I was early to, like, set up for the stream. It just took a couple minutes. <laughs> this is giving me the casual, there is no danger here, feeling horror movies to try to draw you in with. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, I definitely can see that. Better late than never. Well, it depends on what you're late for, but yeah, in general. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. Uh, what? What the? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. Did he get drugged? Ah, uh, maybe. I guess we'll find out. Uh, certainly doesn't seem great. Maybe just the nerves got to me, right? The nerves got to me and now I just, like, passed out. You know, like you do. That was how it all began, and how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized. The reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy 
wasn't because I had the ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience ultimate despair. Welcome to Despair. Prologue. Well then. Do you want to save the data? I mean, I guess. Why not? Makoto Negi. Hmm. But what? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Oh, oh, that's a cute little aesthetic. Like a pop-up book aesthetic, kind of. <laughs> Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the left mouse button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Use w the WASD buttons to adjust your viewpoints. Or you can press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? Okay. I okay, so it's like that. Gotcha. Or I can do it like this. Alright, alright. Okay, we got already some, like, what, CCTV going on in here? Is that typical for a Japanese high school? Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they have these to keep weirdos from just wandering in. Okay. Hmm. Oh, a note? Hello? That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? It's some kind of cheap-looking pamphlet. There's something handwritten on it? The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Hmm, perhaps. Oh, what time is it? Are there no hands on this clock? Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. Okay, maybe there are hands and it's just, like, getting covered by the reflection. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? And you got- you, you slept. I mean, sleeping is, like, the world's natural time machine, as we all know. Okay, oh, what's this? Some sort of, um, TV? There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. Hmm. Or we could maybe just use the door? Get out of here? I'd better look out in the classroom a little more before I head out. Indeed. Okay. What is this decor? What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it... Yep, definitely metal. Thick too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is... I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall, and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean... This is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then, if that's true... That just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows. It's like a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. You can leave the classroom by pressing the R key. Okay. The R key. Oh, now I will press the R key. 
Leave the area? Yes. Jeez, this hallway is kind of weird, too. This is getting stranger by the second. Yeah, very purple. Very purple in here. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. Use the WASD keys to move through the hallway. Hold down the shift key while moving to run. Also, you can press the tab key to bring up a map. Press the tab key again to close the map. How convenient. Okay, I mean, I guess we'll check the map. So we need to get to, like, to the main hall, which is somewhere around here, perhaps. Um, I don't know, maybe it's this way? Right. Despair Hotel. Despair Hotel. I guess it's a place for people to stay overnight. But anyway, I need to get to the main hall. It's an ominous name. Okay. Room 1B. The door is locked tight. Okay. Sort of like surrealist over here. I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Alright, maybe the hall is this way. Surely sprinting won't be needed later. Why would it ever be needed? I don't know. And it's always nice to be able to sprint in a game regardless of what challenges you face. Makes things go faster. The AV room. It's locked. The school's store? I guess it's not open. This is not how you lock something up that's simply not open. I'm sorry to say, but this is accurate. Uh, do I want to go through the exit here? Is this where we need to go? Would seem to be. This game looks really cool. Yeah, it does so far, for sure. By the time we got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, hey! Another new kid? Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. Okay, some orientation. Nice, nice. So, counting him, that makes 15. Let's deal with, like, Seems Sephiroth like in the right. <laughs> point, but I wonder if this is everyone. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been hand-picked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Oh, hold on a moment, I need to... Yeah, that's just like a scam like in the Twitch chat, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Best viewers in Farzan. Yeah. Um... How do I moderate you? Uh... Click to apply... I will... Wait, I assume that's... Yeah, probably scam. scam. Okay. I am banning that account from the chat. Boom. Congratulations, you've become my first banned user. <laughs> Didn't, I hoped it wouldn't come to this, but you're not going to be promoting random nonsense in my chat. Thanks for the view, though, if you're a real person who's watching. <laughs> All right, they looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. What a historic day, indeed. Up for the last band user. Uh, I mean, honestly, hopefully not the last band user, because if I end up having to ban more users, that means I'm going to have more viewers, right? And once you get to a certain size, you get you gotta ban people. Okay, anyways, uh, maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Um, how's it going? Uh, my name's Makoto Nagi. Is it Nagi or like Naigi? I don't know. Sorry I'm late, but just stuff happened and then all of a sudden I was just uh, 
to sleep, and a bunch of stuff is a bit generous to describe walking into the building and then collapsing. So. Huh? That's like one notable thing. Whoa, you two! Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange, I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Got it! Just a moment, there's something else we must address. Nayegi at the beginning, okay. Listen to me! Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable! Surely you are aware that the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp! To be late on your first day is unspeakable! I must report you, and you must accept your due punishment! What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right! Everyone, just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? Well, now's no time for freaking introductions. <laughs> Maybe, but it may be good to be at least... Or to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we don't know each other's names? Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, this is a lot of boxes to just be dropped, like, immediately on me. Huh. I thought this was... Okay. Um... Okay. Alright, what female voice have I not used yet? <laughs> have I done generic female voice? I don't think so. Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way, then. We can move on to whatever else. Sound good? Hey, Cork Attack, welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying Danganronpa. I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on that Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but... I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Aim at the students and press the left mouse button to talk to them. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. Okay. We're gonna need to, like, take notes. Um, I don't think I will necessarily on this first encounter, but I've got the paper ready, just in case. Okay. That's how you know you're a real game, when you're prepared to take notes. Okay, uh, let's start with Hifumi Yamada. I am Hifumi Yamada. But if you want to call me by my nickname, the Alpha and the Omega. I don't mind. Yeah, no one calls you that. I guarantee it. Not a soul. Ultimate fanfic creator. Yep, okay, that checks out. <laughs> by the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad. Oh. That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... Oh, hello, Fiend. Welcome to the stream. The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fan fiction. I am sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nagy, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. Ooh, splinter mm -hmm. extraction. That's, that's nasty. Right. My condolences. <laughs> For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What, what kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basest urges. Isn't that like the opposite of deep meaning? Like, surface level, base? I don't know. I guess you could have some meanings regarding that. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Okay, uh... Let's go for... Hiyotaka 
Ishimaru. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. Are you like an admirable or like an admiral when you're just in high school? What the heck, man? How, how'd that happen? Kiyotaka Ishimaru, ultimate moral compass. So that's Kiyotaka, according to what I saw about him on that thread. He went into a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. Hello, Ani. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying it. He is also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of Ultimate Moral Compass. Okay, what was I doing? Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Nyagi, right? <laughs> That's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Got it. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right? This guy is kind of annoying. Okay. Leon Kuata. Yo, the name's Leon Kuata. What's up? Okay. Yeah. Ultimate baseball star, Leon Kuata. I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. And that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? huh? What's wrong? No, nothing, I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... Give me a break. What were you expecting? Some, kind of, some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? What does that have to do with your athletic abilities? Love how he looks so intense but has a chill voice. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. <laughs> what? Oh man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? <laughs> Seriously? I hate that picture. This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of national championship regulations. He's had quite the glove. Indeed, indeed. But now I refuse to cut my hair. And I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? You know, I don't like baseball, like, at all. I've never gone to a single practice. You're just that good? Wow. He's never practiced if he was still his team's star player? Some kind of prodigy. Yeah! And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. Oh, I mean, whatever floats your boat, I guess. I mean, if I were in your position, I'd probably go pro for at least a few years. Get like, you know, a few million dollars to start off life. But, you know, what, whatever you want to do. Me when I've spent three years growing my hair. Fair, fair. A dream for the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar, and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Okay, you are giving like generic female voice, right? Sayaka Miyazono. Hi, I'm Sayaka Miyazono. I look forward Mizer. to getting to know you. The ultimate pop sensation. Ah, Sayaka, of course. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing. And that pleasant scent can't quite place. As a baseball player, he must always look at the national anthem singers with envy. Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Sayaka Mazona. When I saw her name and that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. 
As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. What, did I used to know her? Is that where we're going with this? <laughs> I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. I, I thought that was my internal monologue. But did, did you hear me? What? Uh... I'm psychic. Like, actually? Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Uh, hey, by any chance... Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, did... Uh... The classic childhood friend that doesn't remember me trip. Well, actually, it turns out this might be the classic childhood friend that does remember me trip. Just hold on. Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Uh, um... S sorry, I just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um, you're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Um... See, I wasn't concerned until that last line of... Like, monologue, I guess, technically. I hope she doesn't die immediately. That's like my easiest female voice. <laughs> Toko Fukua. Fukua? Fukua. Okay, Toko Fuku. Fu Fukua. Oh. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but. Panic indeed. I'm Toko. Toko Fukawa. Fukawa, okay. Fukawa. Gotcha. Ultimate writing prodigy. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. 10? That's actually kind of insane. <laughs> like, to, to write quality stuff at 10. That is very impressive. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men poll. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes, and all her books are instant bestsellers. Well, it depends. It could have been a child's book, hypothetically. I mean, even a child's book, right? Like, just because they're, like, shorter and simpler doesn't mean they're necessarily easier to write. And that's still a, a distinct craft. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type. What with her masterpiece being a romance and all. <laughs> Counter, if you give a mouse a cookie. Oh, was that written by a child? I had no idea. Interesting, I'll have to look into that. What's your problem? <laughs> what? It's not polite to stare, you know. That's a weird smile. What I'm staring heck? at me like I'm some filthy creature. A filthy creature? No, I just thought. <laughs> I know you just thought. No, it's just a good good book. Ah, okay. You just thought you've never seen such an ugly or sorry. Just thought you've never seen such an ugly woman. Just thought it was so funny. No, no, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm Don't bother trying. trying to lie to me. No, it's true. Otherwise, you know you can't stand looking at me. I mean, she's kind of average looking. She's not bad. She's not ugly. Well, I mean, anyway. it's like when she makes those ugly faces. <laughs> well, whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. <laughs> Someone's unstable. That's how you can tell she's an author. Ah, oh, come on. That's unfair to authors, I think. 
Yeah. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's see. For you, I was doing bubbly voice, right? Oi, Asahina. Hey, ya. I'm Aoi Asahina, but my friends just call me Hina. Sup? Sup, indeed. Ultimate swimming pro. Ah, oh, nice. Swimming. It's almost swimming season over here. I should probably swim this year. That'd be nice. Like recreate, uh, recreationally, of course. The, did they put you in a room or something? And we are currently in a room. But as far as I'm aware, we came here of our own volition. We didn't, like, get sent here or something. Oh, Asahina. She's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic candidate, or cadet, rather. She is without a doubt the ultimate swimming pro. Right. The combination of her ability, appearance, and um, proportions has been widely discussed online. So, uh, what's your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Negi. <laughs> Oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. That it is that. You got it. Sure, sure, you got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Nagi, Makoto Nagi. She just keep kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. I was voiced by the same VA as Morgana. And Sothis, and I think that's pretty cool. You know, now that you mention it, uh, and so I kind it, I, I can get, I can hear that. That's neat. Huh? Oh, sorry. What are you doing? You don't know. If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard of that before in my life. Mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spelled exactly like it sounds. Um, you're not illiterate, are you? <laughs> well, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out uh, later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same thing here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. That's nice. She seems like one of the more pleasant ones. We'll talk to uh, you. Why not? Name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet you. Oh, sheesh. All right, no need to get, get to dropping f bombs right off the bat, man. This is a family stream. <laughs> oh, normally is this one probably isn't. Mondo Awada, huh? Which means he's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um, nice to meet you, too. Yo. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word, and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. His hair looks like a crocodile. Like a tail, specifically. I can see that. How the hell did he get into a school? Shouldn't he be in juvie or something? Uh, I mean, arguably. However... Have you considered that he is the ultimate biker gang leader? Right? And that that's some charisma. He could have a good future in politics, Adam. Potentially. Pretty sure the school doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like a somewhat amoral institution. Okay, uh... Chihiri Fujisaki. Ch no, Chihiro Fujisaki. Nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Okay. The ultimate programmer. Ooh. Mm. Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. Ultimate. That there's only 
something in the school cares about. Yep, yep. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Huh? Well, okay, that was basically voiced. Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Turns out she's part Canadian. Jihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting-edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate program. Though I will say, I, I read an article somewhere, I forget from where, but it was basically saying that like the like overly polite Canadian stereotype is like becoming less accurate over time. That like, like, cause I think they had done like literature studies that Canadians are actually like, Several years ago, we're like the, some of like the nicest, most polite people in the world. But now, I think they're, 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 I think they're like dropping in the rankings somewhat. I remember reading. So who knows? Who knows? But maybe, uh, maybe as an American, I gotta start worrying about the Canadians like coming down and going all Viking on us or something. And they burnt down the White House at one time. So you, you, you gotta—it's always the nice ones you gotta look out for. You never know when they're about to snap. One part has to do which part of Canada you're talking about. Fair enough, fair enough. I hear the, the Quebec Reserve is high strung in particular. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her legion of fans. Um. Hey, so, uh, listen. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. I'm really sorry. Quebec will just kill you. Uh, especially if you don't speak French. Huh? Well, what are you uh, apologizing for now? Um... Well, just because you seem upset. You seem mad at me, right? No, not at all! I was just lost in thought about something. Why is she crying? She's just... She's a programmer, so she's like super socially awkward, it would seem. Huh? Huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. No, oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. Are we learning our main character's type, perhaps? Okay. Junko Inoshima. Hi! I'm Junko Inoshima. Charmed, I'm sure. Okay. Hello. Okay. The ultimate fashionista? That is, yeah, I agree, uh, Cork Attack, that is way too big of a smile. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. She scares you, Mad Cow? Perhaps rightfully so, I suppose we'll find out. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? As in purchased from the photo store? How does that work? Yeah, you know, edited to hell and back with like computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real how much is, is he saying out loud most and it, i assume it's not difficult to tell what can we do come on don't act so surprised you're gonna make me all depressed totally it's totally normal these days to photoshop the crap out of cover photos if you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. Oh, you're asking about the main character. Uh, I mean, I think 
like a certain color is his internal dial monologue and a different color is what he's actually saying. Kyoko Kirigi. Or Kirigiri, right. So, um, can I ask you your name? My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. The blue text is his thoughts. Okay, okay. So very monotone, girl. Blue's internal dialogue, what is just him talking? The ultimate, who knows? I'm gonna say ultimate detective. She's pretty tight lipped, right? Tight lipped, huh? Leave, leave your predictions in the chat of what she's the ultimate of. Oh, but, you know. Her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me. Ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Ultimate assassin? Ooh, maybe. Um, so what are you doing at this school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you. So I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... She's a bit too smug and self-satisfied for that to be the case. Her face is like an iron mask. She doesn't want to tell me anything. No point in asking. Those four over there are the only ones left. Oh, Celeste. Or maybe just Celeste. Ultimate spoiled rich kid. I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Yeah, like from Europe or something? Drill hair. The best hair. <laughs> She's ultimate getting people to question her ultimate. Ooh, ooh. Ultimate gambler. Celestia Luden. Huh. <laughs> Ludenberg is my fa is my name. But if you don't mind, I would prefer for you to call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you are talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. Are you an ultimate gambler because you win or because you gamble more than anyone else? I mean, I presume you gotta have like the highest success rate to be the ultimate gambler. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Ah, <laughs> so she cheats, got it. <laughs> Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I better watch myself around her. 